What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to animate anything through code. It's going to be a very easy way to follow, so let's get started. But first, if you are serious about learning and making your first game in Unreal Engine 5, join my Unreal Club. Inside, you will be able to download entire private files from my tutorials, enter private meetings and webinars with industry experts, access exclusive ebooks packed with the best tricks, get powerful asset frameworks to speed up your blueprints, and much more. The link is in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. Alright, so first of all, how are we gonna go ahead and animate through blueprints and through code. You have probably heard that animation requires an external 3D program, like Blender or Maya, where it takes hours and a lot of crazy stuff to move simple things. But in this case, I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it in Unreal Engine through literally blueprints. Now, of course, this is gonna limit the type of animations. This is gonna be an animation type for mainly static meshes not skeletal meshes. So if you're looking to animate a character, this will not really work just like that, okay? It's gonna require a bit more tweaking. Now, you can use this for anything else, any prop or anything. So, first of all, let's go ahead and go into the content browser, right-click, and create a new blueprint class. In this case, let's select actor, because it's essentially any object that is spawned in the world, and let's call this BP underscore, and then animated or whatever, right? Just for this example. Now, of course, if you already have a blueprint that you wanna use, you can go ahead and open that up. So, in this case, I'm gonna animate a very simple thing, and it's gonna be essentially this cube over here, just because it's easy, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click this search button, there we go, I'm gonna go here and add the static mesh, because I already have it selected, I can add it directly, and here it is. Cool, so I have my cube over here, and I am going to be animating this. So if I drag this into the level, well, not the original model, remember it has to be the blueprint, <laughs> otherwise code will not work, here we have it. Now, of course, nothing happens. So what is the method that we are gonna go ahead and use to animate this through code? Well, it's gonna be timelines. Timelines are super easy to use. People often confuse a lot inside of timelines, but it's actually pretty simple once you know the principles. So over here, let's go ahead and delete everything, and let's go ahead and leave the uh, big in play because, well, it's gonna be um, one time at the beginning, and the timeline will just make sure that this will go and repeat or do it once, whatever you prefer. So let's go ahead and add a timeline with this simple node. And here it is, we can name our timeline. Now in this case, you should name your timelines according to what they do. In this case, we're gonna do a simple animation of just moving the cube like up and down, left to right, whatever it is, right? So let's just put move and that's it. Now we have a couple of different inputs that we can choose from. We can directly play or we can make sure that it will always be, you know, from the start. So if, for example, you want to interrupt an animation and play from the story, you would do it here. In this case, I don't really care. We can stop it. We can reverse. We can reverse always from the end. And then don't worry about this too. You would never use them pretty much. So the timeline, apart from inputs, of course, has outputs. We have an update, finished, and direction output. So the update is essentially what happens every frame inside of the timeline. And here's where we would essentially use the values of the timeline to update that location or rotation or whatever it is to actually animate it. Then the finish is simply use a one-time execution when the timeline ends, so we can do something. And then direction, well, this is an input that will change right now once we start customizing it. So just forget about direction just for now. Cool, so with that said, we can actually double click to open up the timeline and start actually customizing everything that we need. So first of all, as you can see, there's pretty much nothing, it's empty. This is because we need to create a new track, which we'll do in a second. But before you create a new track, we need to specify a length, right? How much will this animation last, right? It's the duration. So let's go ahead and put in around, you know, two seconds just for now. Now we can change this later on, but I just like to always set it before I create my track, so it's easier, okay? Now make sure that this is, uh, this, remember this is always in seconds, okay? So we can create a new track and we have different track types, okay? We have a flow track, a vector track, an event track, and a color track. Now, the easiest one and the one that is essentially universal and you can use for absolutely anything, including vectors outside of the timeline, 
is a float and this is the one that I want to teach you today so let's go ahead and click on float and now we can rename this track into whatever we want now the track name will be the output name that you will see in a second so in this case you need to think about the name of the track as what is the output what's the outcome in this case the outcome will be well the position of this cube because that's what we want to change so let's go ahead and just type location and there we go so now we have a cool track for this location and it lasts two seconds so now it is time to create keyframes this is nothing similar to the keyframes that you might be thinking of when we you know animate in blender or in other 3d software okay this are the keyframes that are just easy to use for everyone <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and just find a literally a random point in our timeline and just right click and add the first key now the first key will always start at the beginning of the timeline right so it makes sense it goes in order let's go ahead and put the time to be zero and value zero okay so it will be right here the timeline starts with the float um you know at zero now we want to add another float and this will be the destination okay this will be when do we want to end this stuff and with what value we want to end that. so with the time let's put in around two right so it ends at the end of my timeline and then for the value well timelines always go from zero to one now you can go if you want higher but i recommend from staying um from zero to one it will be easier so let's put one and then we click these two buttons we readjust the timelines you can see it goes from zero to one so basically our location will go from zero to one in two seconds that's simple i mean it's super easy now we can do more things we can right click in the middle of this and make it speed up right by just right clicking change this into auto and then you know moving these things around right we can start to do things but for the purpose of the tutorial let's keep it simple and just linear okay Cool. So we go back to the event graph with our timeline finished. As you can see, we have a new output. This is what I was saying about direction. Just ignore direction. You will always use the output of the track. In this case, we created a flow track, so we have a float value. Now you will see why we didn't create a vector track if we're going to want to move the location, right? In this case, well, first of all, because I believe that this method is better for even vectors. And second of all, because this flow method is essentially universal you can use it for whatever type of animation you want it doesn't matter if you're moving an object or if you're like doing something crazy or rotating or it doesn't matter so with that said we want to go ahead and you know update this um you know cubes location so what we can do is get this new float that will go again from zero to the value of one in two seconds and do a lerp a lerp is essentially just an interpolation from one value to another which is what we're going to be doing now there's different types of lerps in this case we want to use the float and there we go we have this new lerp but we want to go ahead and hold the left control in our keyboard and move this location input into the alpha and now it will be easy because we will transition from value of a to value of b from zero to one depending on the location now let me rephrase this this timeline will go from zero to one in two seconds therefore the alpha will go from zero to one in two seconds so we will go from value a to value b in two seconds if that makes sense and with the timeline super easy because we only have these little two things and we can add smooth things and everything it's kind of crazy so now with this new value what we can do is use it for what we want in this case like i mentioned we want to go ahead and move the cube so let's get our cube and just set the location okay in this case let's do relative location and just plug the update into here now very important this has to be on the update because every frame while the timeline is updating we will of course update it with a new value of location so over here we want to go ahead and just right click and split this into three axes as you can see now we can actually use floats which is really cool right so we have x y and z independently let's go ahead and use move for example the cube upwards and downwards so we can just plug this here into z because that is up and down 
and then specify what we want to go from a relative location of 0 to a one of like 10. And this will go 10 units upwards, okay? And just remember that relative is essentially used in the local space. So in the space of here, from 0 to 10. Now, I just realized that's literally trash. <laughs> that is not a lot. So let's do like um, a solid, you know, uh, 80 just for now, okay? Now, of course, you can put any values that you want. This is just an example. And you will see that that's it. It will literally go upwards. So I press play. The cube goes upwards into the destination in two seconds. Now, that was a bit too slow. So we can actually update the timeline. I also want to increase the amount to like 200. And now, as you can see, it goes up in two seconds. But let's do this a bit faster. So with double click on the timeline, we can open this again, and we can change the length, okay? Now, before changing the length, I recommend to go to the last point and change here the length that you want to, you know, be updated to. So that way you don't lose this point when the length is less, if that makes sense, you know? So with this new point selected, well, this end one, right? Let's put in like uh, one second instead, and then the length of this to one second. As you can see now, we just rearranged the timeline and it goes faster. Now, it goes up and it doesn't go back down. How can we change this? Well, there's a very simple approach. As you can see, we have a finished output. So what we can do is use a simple node in real, which is called the flip-flop, okay? Basically, flip-flop works in a simple way. Each time an input comes in, we go A. The second time, B. As, and then just back and forth, you know? So what we can do is very simple. Just get um, the first time to go um, to reverse, right? And then the next time to go back to play. Now this looks very ugly, but you will see that actually makes the trick. It goes up and down, up and down. Now how does this work? Well, it's very simple. Let me go ahead and rearrange the nodes over here. So I'm gonna put this like, I guess around here, yes. And then we can put this one around here, okay? So basically this works in a very simple way. The first time that we finish, we'll go through A. So we'll reverse it back, so, okay? So we'll go downwards, right? Because we were up. And then the second time in the flip-flop, it will go back to play because we were reversing. Now you go back forwards, right? It's just a simple loop. Now you can use branches and variables, but this is a very simple way. And you can see that now we have a really cool interpolation going on, which is super easy. Now, this works with absolutely anything that we want. It doesn't need to be exactly movement, you know? For example, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these nodes, and I'm gonna simply update the rotation instead of the location. So I can do set rotation. Once again, it's gonna be relative. And I'm gonna right click and split it. I wanna change the, you know, uh, let's do like Y. And yeah, let's go from zero to 200. And you will see that now the cube is rotating in the Y axis back and forth from zero to 200 with the alpha of location, which is just an interpolation from zero to one in one second. That's it. That's all that you need to know about timelines to create simple animations in a real engine all by code. Again, not using keyframes through the sequencer or other 3D softwares. Yes, of course, I'm contracting them a bit myself because we're using keyframes, but I don't I don't really believe that, <laughs> that this should be considered the keyframes that you know. You know, this is a very simple way of saying, okay, we'll go from A to B. Now, like I mentioned, we can create, you know, different points. We can make it slow while they start and then fast, as you can see, right? Um, or the other way around, fast and then slow. But it goes really towards where you want, right? We can start to move this around. Right? And get really crazy outcomes. Right? So we have some smoothing going on, as you can see. Smoothing takes place. It's super smooth right now, right? <laughs> Which is pretty cool. So yeah. And of course, if the line goes down, right? The timeline will go uh, basically in the reverse direction, as uh, you know, it might make sense. So now. 
Anyway, so that's it guys. I mean, that's all what you need to know. Like I said, you can use this for whatever you want. It doesn't need to be limited necessarily to location or rotation. So that's it guys. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it. You like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so check them out. Join my Unreal Club if you're serious about learning Unreal Engine 5. And now, yes, with all that said, bye-bye.